Hey, how's it going? Hey, I wanted to give you an update on the DC to DC charger setup here on our Class C motorhome because recently I've made some changes to it that I think you might find interesting, especially if you're in the market for a DC to DC charger to help recharge your lithium batteries from your engine's alternator while you're out driving on those travel days. Back in 2019, I installed a, a Renogy 20 amp DC to DC charger and recently I, I replaced that with a Victron a DC to DC charger. So I want to take you through the uh, reasons why I did that and show you uh, how that works and I also made some changes to the cabling and the connections on the on the Victron uh, DC charger that I think you'll find uh, interesting. There it is. <laughs> well, the first thing I want to point out is that if you do have uh, lithium batteries installed and you do plan on charging those batteries with your engine's alternator, you are going to need to have some sort of DC to DC charger installed. And the reason is because lithium batteries will take as much current as you can throw at them. That could be bad for your engine's alternator if it's not set up for that kind of load. It could actually damage your alternator and you certainly don't want that. So having a DC to DC charger helps regulate the amount of current coming from your alternator and limiting that amount of current and it also gives you some charging parameters to properly charge your batteries. Now I go into this in more detail in the installation video I did on the Renogy 20 amp charger so I'll be sure to link to that uh, for more information. I also want to point out that the Renogy DC charger has actually worked just fine uh, since I installed it. My reasons for going with the Victron now have uh, more to do with the amount of features Features that it has that the Renogy 20 amp simply doesn't. It's a 30 amp uh, charger so I can put 10 more amps into my batteries as opposed to uh, 20. I can now put in a maximum of 30 amps with this charger so that's a good thing. Now it is a little bit more expensive. It's another hundred dollars. I think it's about two hundred and fifteen dollars or so on Amazon versus like the hundred and fifteen dollar um, Renogy 20 amp uh, DC charger. It's got Bluetooth capability. I can configure it and set everything up through the Bluetooth uh, mobile app that I already have installed because I have a lot of other Victron equipment. But just like the other Victron uh, devices, you go up here to the little cog and then um, you can have access to all the different uh, settings. You can have uh, this DC to DC charger in, in the charger mode and you can also set it up as a uh, as just a power supply. So if you wanted to run something and give it like 12 volts of 12.7 uh, or something all the time uh, while your engine's running, you can just set it up as a power supply. But we're running it as a charger, so we're gonna set up that mode. Now just like the other Victron charge controllers, I can go in here to my battery settings and then I have access to all the different charge parameters. Now I'm set up as a user-defined uh, configuration right now because I am directly setting the uh, charge voltages uh, the way that I have them all set up for my other uh, solar chargers so that everything is in sync. Now if I wanted to just use one of the presets I go to select preset and then I say go down here and select uh, lithium iron phosphate battery and then it'll automatically load the uh, default setup for your lithium batteries. So that's a pretty quick way to do that. Uh, you can also choose you know from a number of different battery types and Victron configurations like lead acid, AGM, uh, you know a bunch of different stuff. This uh, DC charger also has a lot of battery protection modes and safeguards to help protect the uh, the engine's alternator from from being overloaded. Now swapping out the uh, the Renogy 20 amp with this Victron DC charger wasn't that complicated because I had already run all the cables and everything here uh, to this point. So it's basically removing the, the Renogy DC charger and reconnecting a lot of the cables. Now there were some changes that I made to improve the setup. I clipped off the lugs that, uh, that were on the, the Renogy DC charger cables because 
this uh, Victron one doesn't have lug type connections. It's got those insert type uh, connections. I clipped off the lugs and I crimped on some six gauge uh, ferrules because I'm using six gauge cable here and uh, inserted them here. So I have a nice solid connection in the Victron unit. I like it better because uh, the, all the battery connections here are on the front, whereas the, uh, the Renogy uh, DC charger had two on the back and two connections here on the front. So in order to get to the ones in the back, where I'd have to re remove the unit or really kind of reach around. It's pretty tight. Everything here is on the front now and it's nice and clean. Now another thing that I did was to install some Anderson style connectors on both the inputs. Actually this is the input and this is the output. And the reason I did that was so that I could still join the chassis battery and the house battery together if I needed to. So a lot of motorhomes, they have an emergency start switch and it's tied to a relay. So that let's say your chassis battery is kind of dead and or your generator, if you had a generator, if you couldn't start it because your house batteries were dead, you could hit this switch and it would join the two batteries together essentially giving you like a little jump start. By putting the uh, DC charger in that circuit, using those same cables to support the DC charger, it's now a one-way uh, flow. So I can no longer join the two systems uh, because this actually functions more like a battery isolator as well. I can now just take my starter battery and my house battery, disconnect these two connectors, and then connect them together manually. So if I ever needed to jump my chassis battery, I could just do that right here and then start it right up and then reconnect them. It's kind of a roundabout way to do this and I think it gives me a lot of other capabilities as well. If I ever wanted to connect something directly to my, my house batteries, I could just put an Anderson connector on it. Maybe I have a different charger or I wanted to power something. Uh, I could do that uh, through this connection as well. Now the final thing with this uh, with this installation is that I, I still needed to be able to turn the the charger on and off from the cab. That's just the way that I have it set up because I like to be able to turn it on and off while I'm driving and uh, not put too much burden on my alternator. And I like to just do that manually. So if I'm plowing up a, a steep grade on a mountain pass or something, and I don't want too much burden on my alternator and my engine, I'll just flick a switch that I installed uh, in the cab to just turn this off. Now, that's this cable here. It's plugged into this, uh, this little spot right here. So this is the power cable, which is like a remote control for the, uh, the Victron unit. The Rana G1 had a similar feature, and I just used this same uh, cable here, which is uh, just basically a 12-volt source tied to that switch. Uh, when it comes out of the box, it's got this little jumper here that jumpers both connections. It can run completely automatic, and by programming some of the, uh, the battery disconnect features, like when the engine's not running, it will automatically turn on and off, where, uh, whereas the Renogy one was not as uh, automated. So this is the battery protect modes. Uh, one of them is the uh, engine shutdown detection uh, setting. So you can set the type of alternator you have if you have a smart alternator or just a regular alternator or you know user defined setting and and set the uh, the voltages for when it you want it to detect when the engine is actually off and not running. So once it hits those uh, those voltages, uh, it'll like say the shutdown voltage. Once it hits 13.5, the DC to DC charger will automatically shut off. So if you had those jumpers on the front just connected, and it's kind of in automatic mode, you'd probably enable engine shutdown detection mode, and then set these parameters so that when you turn your ignition off, it'll automatically shut off the charger and you really don't have to do much. And then while it's running, it'll just charge it the way you've set it up to charge. Now this other setting is really useful too. It's like an input voltage lockout, and you can set it to the, uh, the lockout voltage. So in my case, if the voltage uh, 
on the alternator, you know, for the, the chassis system drops below 12.5, it's going to stop charging. It's going to just cut off the output altogether. And then once it rises back up to 12.8, uh, it's going to start the charger again. So this is really useful if you, you know, have a load on your chassis and you want to make sure that it's not uh, trying to charge while you're while your alternator is uh, is really working hard or under a heavy load, uh, you can cut off that charging feature automatically, and it'll do that. And then once it uh, builds that uh, voltage back up, uh, then it'll kick back in. Really useful setting here to uh, to protect your batteries. Okay, take a look at my uh, battery monitor here. You can see right now I'm pulling in about 35 amps from solar batteries at 74%. And with the engine running now, if I turn on the DC charger here with this switch, it should take a sec. And then this should jump up to, yeah, 69 amps. So yeah, another 30 amps being pushed into the batteries. Now just using the battery monitor here, we can see what happens when I shut off the engine. So the, the engine uh, shutdown should kick in. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the engine. And then 68 should jump down to 35. So yeah, it automatically kicked it off and my remote switch is still on. So I don't have to worry about mistakenly, uh, mistakenly draining my battery and leaving the switch on. Now there's a couple things that I think are missing from here that I wish were included and one of them is some sort of a current reading so there's apparently no shunt or anything inside this device that can give you some sort of a amperage reading that's uh, the output of the uh, DC charger it would be really nice to see you know when you're powering this on you know how many amps are coming out of the charger the only way to really get that is to install maybe a smart shunt, Victron has a smart shunt that you can install between the output of the DC charger and your battery bank to measure how much current is going uh, through there. Um, but it's not there. It's kind of an extra expense uh, if you wanted to see that. Now, if you have a battery monitoring system, you can kind of look at the bump <laughs> in current once you have this running and do some mental math <laughs> to figure out how much is probably coming from from your DC charger. And that brings me to another uh, shortcoming I think of this is that uh, the other, uh, let's say if I go to one of my charge controllers, you know, there's a way that I can network my Victron devices together by going up here and there's a VE smart networking feature that you can see here that I have all of these other Victron devices that are all networked together and they can then share data amongst them. The DC charger doesn't have that feature. You know, there's no way to connect the DC charger to the VE Smart network if you're using other Victron equipment. Now that would be really useful if you had a, you know, a BMV 712 or some sort of battery, you know, Victron battery monitoring system that uh, could display you know separately the the amount of uh, current coming from the uh, the dc charger but it's not there aside from that it works really really well um, i've been using this for a few months now uh, while we've been driving i flip it on and let it run for a little while flip it off and uh, it works pretty well. But there's a lot of detail settings here. I encourage you if you're interested to go check out the documentation for this. And uh, it goes through all of those uh, charge settings and the battery protection settings and tells you uh, what to use them for. And uh, it's gonna vary based on the type of alternator and uh, battery system that you have. But if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them if you drop them below and I hope this uh, helps you out and gives you some more information in case you're looking to add a DC to DC charger to your setup. So 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you in the next one.